What do you want? Oh Quesadilla? <laughs> no? I guess he's gluten free. Vegan? <laughs> Oh, he doesn't like vegans. Oh. Today, I'm gonna show you the best of Kyoto. But first, we have a train to catch. All right guys, welcome to the Japanese bullet train. This is by far the best way to get around the entire country. This is what the seats look like. You have leg space. That right there is not sped up. <laughs> and that's not even the top speed. These bullet trains can go upwards of 320 kilometers per hour. To give you an idea, an airplane typically flies around 920 kilometers an hour and there's like no security check, you just walk on and you're already just cruising so fast. It is the best way to get around. And today's episode of The Price is Right, you win a Catherine Esquivel. Valued at $3. <laughs> and we have just arrived in Kyoto. So right now we are in Ninenzaka. Ninenzaka is that traditional Japanese feel. You've got the old school looking buildings. It's so beautiful. There's temples around. That is a fried rice cake. Mm. It smells really good and apparently it has soya sauce. I have found a new favorite I think in Japan. Really good. It's very different. It's chewy. Almost like a cheese. The story of my life. Good morning guys. Hi. Feel very sleepy. Everyone, yeah, if you can see it, everyone's <laughs> suffering a little bit. We're missing sunrise <laughs> at the bamboo forest this morning. So we've got our train all set here and we're on our way. We got about a 53 minute transit to get there. And this is how I kill time on the train. And this is why you wake up a little bit early. It is currently 7.30, maybe close to 8, and we haven't seen a single other person here. This place is considered a sunscape, which means you really gotta enjoy. It's very peaceful and beautiful. Today's start is off to a good one because we have Google Maps our way, one hour outside of Kyoto, to the wrong bamboo forest. We didn't. <laughs> we came to the wrong one. So now we're about an hour and a half away from the real Hour one. and a half? If no, we take it's a like bus, 50 minutes. It's 30 minutes by taxi, so we're oh. gonna get a taxi. Our expensive savior. Oh, nice. The crowds have arrived. Our early wake-up call was, we're not. All right, guys, we've made it. It's time to get the world-renowned bamboo forest photo, so let's do it. It's empty. How do you feel about the situation? Uh, I think Photoshop is going to be an amazing uh, tool <laughs> on this particular moment. So this is the realities of how busy this place gets by about 11 o'clock during high season. It's madness. You got to get here early. I'm not saying it's not worth it. It's truly beautiful, but you got to get here really early. 30 minute walk away to the top of a mountain is the next thing to see in this area. On top of the mountain you have a group of monkeys that are just total a-holes. I was here like three and a half years ago and these are the worst monkeys I've ever seen. This area is packed. I can't believe how busy it is here. I can't even walk on the sidewalk. There's too many people. And so we now begin our hike to meet with the hostile monkeys. We have made it to the top of the mountain here and we've got a bunch of fellow monkey friends hanging around. And I have to say, like last time I was here about three and a half years ago, it was way more chaotic. The monkeys were fighting, they were like jumping on people. And I think they've kind of controlled it a little bit because they've got a couple people on security basically chasing off monkeys if they get too aggressive. Now, there's not a ton to do up here. It's a cool view over the city. You got a little pond with some koi, lots of monkeys around and you can actually go inside there to feed them within the gate, which is kind of cool. But Ah, we're gonna head back down the mountain because we're trying to make our way over to Nara to see some more animals. So one of my commitments to you guys on the Lots of Blanc channel is always chasing the adventure. Oh! <laughs> I got lift off. <laughs> All right guys, so about a two and a half dollar train ride later, we're back at Kyoto Station and we have another train that we gotta catch. It's a limited express, 35 minutes here on this train till we get to Nara Station. It's very important that you guys bring cash with you because that's the only way we got in here. That's true. And welcome guys to what is probably, most certainly, the highlight of Japan. I wanna introduce you to, <gasps> oh my gosh, they're flocking! They're flocking. Bambi! 
Where's your mother? I mean, uh, guys, uh, I found Bambi's mother. <laughs> um. <laughs> False alarm. The deer is alive. He's about to give birth. When people ask me what I want to do when I'm older, I tell them, I want to be part of the deer rescue patrol. <laughs> There's several deer in the back of this truck. What is that actually? That actually happened? I th of course it happened. I think I think this is a. So all these nails over here are knocked up. Can I say that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Me and Franklin are really hitting it off. I might just be bringing him back to Canada. Too bad. Too big bad. Hi. Hi. He does it to you, not to me. Oh dear. Oh dear. <laughs> much of a bow. One of the things that the deer do here in Japan is they actually bow down, at least these species do, which is kind of a cool thing because if you didn't know in Japan, one of the best ways to show respect to somebody is actually to go like this. It's about below your hips. The lower you bow and the longer you hold it is theoretically how much you respect somebody. So when you see like really famous or important people leave a restaurant or say goodbye to someone, people who are maybe at a technically lower status, they're supposed to hold their bow lower and longer than somebody who would be in a higher status in society. Now one of the funniest things you'll see though is when two individuals are on even statuses or somebody doesn't want to admit that they're at a higher or lower status than the other, you'll see them be in this bow off where two people will hold their bow basically for what could be many many seconds five ten seconds people will just be standing in a bow and it's kind of one of those things like who comes up first right at the end of Nara Park is Todaiji Temple it is in Great Buddha Hall and it's so so much more beautiful than it looks online like it's massive I don't know if it fully shows how big it is but we're about to walk up to it it closes at 530 it costs 600 to get in but here is a little hack if you just want to quickly see it if you want a photo you can see it from the side without even paying you can actually come in there there's like the admission gate that lets you into the center part where we are now but that side part was totally free to enter so you could just go to the ticketing area and get your photo and maybe save yourself the six bucks per person we're gonna go take a look they've only got about 10 15 minutes till they close So we just finished shooting inside of the beautiful temple there and we were chasing the light and we came out back here and then all of a sudden we get recognized and we got introduced <laughs> here to the backpacking family and they've been watching our videos for a while now and it's so cool and surreal <laughs> to meet another family that's been doing basically the same thing that I'm doing but look, they're doing it with a little kid. This is Bodhi, their little guy here. How old is he? Two years? Not even that, but one and a half. One and a half. Oh my gosh. And they're traveling the world with a child. If you're thinking to yourself, oh, I can't get on the road because I've got a family, I have kids. It's possible and they vlog it all so it's super cool it's the backpacking family one of the interesting things that they started with was we've been praying for you and that actually meant a lot to me so i want to cool. say thank you for that that's really it's cool really yeah it's not i don't think it's anyone's surreal. ever told me that when i met them cool it's, yeah it's been on the heart it's yeah. been on the heart you both have and look who's back hi it's the failed travelers follow them for travel tips on how not to get a rental car <laughs> Excuse me, you failed today too. They were renting a car, they didn't have an international driver's license, so the rental agency said you cannot have a car, and now they are back in Kyoto, which is awesome. And we're going for sushi right now at this conveyor belt sushi, which I'm super excited about. It's the biggest wait we've had. We've waited 25 minutes now, maybe 30. Yeah. Better be good. Better be freaking be good. Ooh, the fatty salmon. Whenever it comes around again, I'm grabbing another. It's so good. This one looks real nice. Tempura shrimp. So all that was $25. If you're in the Kyoto station, it's definitely good food. There just might be a line. Wow! Guys, on top of the Kyoto train station, there's a set of LED lights on these staircases here that make beautiful shows. Go, Melissa, go dance! She's so fast. <laughs> you just you were saying. I dirty. wish I was still filming. <laughs> she <laughs> fell. She was like She's on dancing. the top of the staircase. She fell so hard. Like we could hear from here like three stories. I was just <laughs> splat. And everyone here is like. <gasps> oh, my knee. How's your knee? <laughs> it's okay. I did it. <laughs> 
So this is a big tip right here. If you're traveling and you need somewhere to store your stuff, there's tons of lockers available at most of the metro stations. And so for 500 a day, you could be storing what could be about a carry-on luggage. And then for 800 a day. Seven. 700 a day, make it 700. It's a you deal. You can even store me. You can put Katy in there. Day number two in Kyoto, and we're starting it with a bus trip. Uh oh, uh oh. We need the pusher. We're gonna have some animal shaped cappuccinos. Yes, long. Oh, good lord. Look at this. This is a banana chocolate and whipped cream <laughs> pancake. Gosh, it's so amazing. So, it wasn't cheap to eat here. $42 for all that we've ordered. Pancakes oh are two. Cappuccino oh, and an orange juice. My gosh, I have only it. tasted the cream. <laughs> Get away dream. from it. It's the so cream is a dream. Mm. Is that the creme brulee? Yeah, it looks delicious. Hey guys, I ordered a 3D cappuccino. If you can't tell, what is it? It's a platypus? platypus. Oh my gosh. It's a, it's a jackal? You're such a poser. You don't even drink coffee. She stole my bear. This is amazing. They're so fluffy, they're so light. Oh. So I found this little hole in the wall coffee shop right next to Elk, which by the way, the cappuccino may have been cute. It was the worst. But luckily, this coffee right here was really good. Boom. Got some new kicks. This is our room, if you were curious. Very, very, very packed. Oh my gosh. Can't even open the door. It is such a mess, I shouldn't even be showing this right now. Trust me, it doesn't look this bad normally. Are we twins? <laughs> We're matching. Basically just reversed colors. So it says 53 minutes to get from our hotel off to the Ki Kinkakuji Temple, which is the Golden Temple. No, no. Run! So we've entered into the area and it's so beautiful. You can see the grass is kind of like a moss. So this is the entrance ticket and it was 400 yen or about four bucks. Just a little heads up guys, uh, no aliens permitted. Doesn't that look like an alien? You know the, with Tom Cruise? Ooh. Check this out. That is incredible. It's like a Dubai flex all the way here <laughs> in Japan. Actually, it's real gold. Is it? Yeah, it's gold leaves. Wow. Guys, this is what it looks like in the winter. It's crazy. It's, it's so, so pretty. It stands out even more. Oh! Putting 10 cents on the line. I don't know what it means, but everyone's doing it, so. Kobe! Oh, you suck. Here we go. <gasps> oh Where are we going now? Thank you. It's a melon bread with Vanilla ice cream. Oh my god. Oh my god. Smell it. This is my favorite ice cream. It's incredible. <laughs> I've just ordered my dinner here from a vending machine and this is Ichiran, a very famous restaurant here in Japan. There's several of them across the entire country. And basically you put your money in the vending machine, you get spat out these tokens here, then you get an, another line. I waited at the entrance, I'm waiting to get in. So they even have a way that you can tell what booths are open here. How do I like my ramen? I'll never tell. Spiciness? Go medium. Noodle texture. So this is my little tiny eating cubicle where I will be getting my food served to me. It's like nothing I've ever seen before. So I want to introduce you to my neighbor. Let's see. Anyone home? Can I offer you some water? Tap. Oh, here we go. Thank you. Do you have a shit? Oh, that shit. Oh, yeah, yeah. And it has been served. Now in Japan, you might not have known this, it's kind of weird. You actually have to slurp your food if you're really enjoying it. It is slurp worthy. This is some really nice ramen. Total cost for this meal here, around 10 bucks US. Really good. Mm -hmm. So good. Mm -hmm. I love it. I wasn't expecting this. Came in with $20, left with five. Good night. Thank you, man. Like five hours of sleep. We're now off to the orange gates. And there it is guys, the first orange gate of many. All right, so welcome to Fushi. Fushimi Inari. 
Fushimi Inari. And it's a shrine. And you start off at the bottom and traditional to the Japanese shrines. You've got a little area to wash your hands here. Okay, so they say that Fushimi Inari is the gateway to many other gates. Because if you count them, the big ones are 10,000, but if you count the little ones, there are 32,000 gates, which is crazy. They are all orange. That's a lot of gates. A lot of gates. So this is the beginning of the path, and you can see it's gate to gate to gate to gate, and this will go all the way up. I don't know if we'll go all the way to the top today. Uh, coming from a photographer's standpoint, the best part is actually going to be pretty close to the bottom because, like I said, it gets a little bit more spread out later on. Do you know why they are orange? Because they represent the sun. Wow! Warm waffle. Christian, so the little ones are 400,000 yen and the big ones, like this one over here, are 1,400,000 or 1,300,000. What I recommend is you have to get here for sunrise. Get here 6.30, 7 o'clock at the latest. If you want to get videos, you got to come as early as possible. But if you're just here like the average person, I guess the crowds don't matter that much, but it's not that enjoyable to have to be stuck behind a million people trying to take photos. A hundred. A million. Uni, oh, he's so happy. So beautiful. This is why you come during Sakura season, if you don't mind paying the much higher price tag. Right now we are at Tsuki and luckily these two made a reservation because otherwise you can't get in here. And this is actually deemed to be one of the best, if not the best, kakigori place in all of Kyoto. And that's based on somebody that's eaten 3,000 kakigoris over the past year. <laughs> not you guys. It hurt. Yeah. I wish I ate 3,000 in one year. You have to move here. <laughs> it's $10 per dessert, but it's worth every dollar. So I ordered a salted caramel kakigori, which is actually shaved ice. So what they do is they take a massive block of ice and they spin it around with a very, very fine blade and it creates this very like snowflake snow like texture and then they put syrup they put all sorts of toppings on it so it actually comes with a little thing of salt so I'm gonna take a pinch spread the deliciousness on my salted caramel and we're ready is it good no sharing there's no sharing in this table. <laughs> it's amazing. Luckily, we have a little trade deal going on. So I got the salted caramel. She has the strawberry, and I am entitled to several bites. So we were on our way back to our hotel and we saw that there was a big gate with bamboo trees growing above it and we are like, what's behind there? So we walked to the front of that gate and inside is a zen garden, a beautiful little paradise that we didn't even know about until now and it was $5 to get in per person. Relative to all the other places around, this place is super quiet. You even have a few cherry blossoms. Yeah, if you want to see them, I think this is a hidden gem. It it's is. It's very quiet. Tonight we have a very, very special omelette all lined up. Now this is not something I would typically want to order for dinner, but apparently this is the world's finest. Hello, Hello. nice to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet Guys, you. this right here is the chef. He's a celebrity here in Kyoto. Arigato. Arigato. He is arguably, probably factually, the best omelette chef in the world. <laughs> My name is Yukimura Motakichi. Ah. Yeah, my name is Yukimura Motakichi. Yeah, nice to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry, but you're so, so, so beautiful. Yeah. I want a hug. So Kathy just got a new follower here in Japan. Yeah, she thinks she's beautiful. It was so beautiful. confusing because she recognized me, but then she is like, "No, it's not her, but you're still beautiful, so I'm gonna follow you." One of the things that I really love about the nice restaurants in Japan, in Kyoto especially, is they're very small, very intimate. It's almost like a show. You're not just there to eat; you're there to be entertained by the staff, by the show. The world's best omelet, probably the best omelet rice. Omelet rice. A lot of these places will only be able to handle 15 to 20 people because they're so limited in seating. It also means you need to be more organized, making sure you have reservations for certain places, this definitely being one of them. That right there, the evangelist of the omelette.
。And go flying。ね。Oh! <laughs> Are you kidding me? He nailed it. Perfectly just plants right on the rice. Arigato. <laughs> Cause she's so sorry. The cost in total was about thirty-two dollars U.S. per person. Definitely not cheap. That meant we had an appetizer that we split. Meant we had the omelet with the rice. But it was not really just about eating. Tonight was like a show. It was an experience, and I highly recommend experiencing the best omelet that planet Earth might just have to offer. We just scared off a geisha. They don't like being filmed, so you'll see them run around every now and then. But she was like, "Wait, it's the second time I do that, and then You're they like, run away from me. I get like starstruck, like I found a Pokemon or something." 